take advantage. One of your opponents has been running for six, seven, eight years and has greatly engaged the young people of America. I've been in this room for a little while and I see you're, you're introduced by a great young gentleman here. What can you tell the great young people of Iowa that you can do to help them and help their family members and engage them in your campaign and the way that you can? Yeah. If the question is how do we appeal to younger Americans, I would say in the short run there are two big things. The first is a very, very strong job creation proposal there's an awful lot of young people who are graduating from college with big student loans and no jobs. So the first thing is, I think, to be the job creation candidate and have a serious program for job creation is very important. The second is, we have 85 college campuses now where we have students organizing around the idea that they should have the right to choose a personal social security savings account. And that will allow them to take their half of the social security tax, put it into a savings account, that they would control, not the politicians. It would build up interest their whole lifetime. It would be entirely voluntary. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. The Social Security Actuary estimates that over 95% of young people would voluntarily go into that kind of a savings account because the amount of money they get back is so much greater than on the current system. I've talked with people in Chile who created this kind of a system. The principal group in Des Moines actually manages part of the Chilean system. It's been there for over 30 years. It has never paid a single dollar to people who drop below the minimum. Because nobody's dropped below the minimum. And the result is a couple things. One, you, as a young person, you're actually building up an estate because the money's going in this your money. So if anything happens to you, it goes to your family. Two, because you have a, if you start doing this when you're fairly young, your very first part-time job, you have 50 or 60 years of compound interest. The result is, over the course of a generation, we will cut 50% of the income inequality out of the United States. Because every working American will be a stock, will own stock, they'll own bonds, they'll, have, they'll basically have real property. Three, politicians won't tell you when to retire. It's your savings account. You retire when you want to and you think you have enough money, or you don't retire if you don't want to. Four, never again will somebody like Barack Obama be able to say what he said twice in August, which is, I may not be able to send you your check. Now remember, remember how destructive this was. There was $2,400,000,000 in the Social Security Trust Fund. And if the president is threatening senior citizens, I may not be able to send you a check, which was nonsense. At any point, they could have offered a bill to, to exempt the trust fund, paid the checks, but they were trying to deliberately frighten senior citizens for political effect, and I think it's really, truly sad to have a president who would do that. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Statement, not a question. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think what, the question about how do you keep manufacturing jobs here, I don't worry about Mexico so much as I worry about China, but I'll tell you, if we adopt my tax plan, you repeal Dodd-Frank and you repeal Sarbanes-Oxley, you replace the Environmental Protection Agency with a brand new Environmental Solutions Agency that has to apply common sense. And you have zero capital gains tax, so hundreds of billions of dollars poured into the U.S. to create jobs. You have a 12.5% corporate rate, so you bring another $700 billion into the United States to create jobs. And you allow our companies to compete. You have 100% expensing so that any new equipment for a farmer or a factory or a business like this, any new equipment, you write off in one year, so American workers have the most modern equipment in the world. And finally, you um, abolish the death tax permanently so that people who work all their life and save all their life aren't threatened by politicians taking their, their money away when they die. You take those steps, and then the other thing I would do is I would turn unemployment compensation 
into a worker training program. I would say, if you can't find a job and you need unemployment, fine. You have to sign up for a business training program. So while we're giving you money, you're learning new skills, you're becoming more employable, but we're not going to give you money to do nothing for 99 weeks. I think you'd see a very dramatic increase in that. Well, the, the question is whether it will be Social Security. Whether, yes, if you follow the plan we're outlining, and you look at both Chile and you look at Galveston, Texas, which are the two places it's been done, your generation will have a bigger retirement income with more money than your parents and grandparents. It is the only way to do it is to allow you to have the value of money over time with compound interest. And it, there's no question it works, because you have two examples historically where it's been working for over 30 years. So we have a real track record of doing it. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, first of all, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Uh, you and other uh, nominee wannabes have talked some about abolishing certain federal agencies to reduce the bureaucratic influence. As president, uh, how would you accomplish that in the face of an unwilling Congress? Well, and first of all, I hope by convincing them to campaign on these things next year that if we can elect a Republican majority in the House and Senate, that you'll have a willing Congress. And that, that's the first one. Uh, second, I, I did a lot of my early work with Ronald Reagan, and Reagan had a very simple model. He used to say that his job was to turn up the light for the American people so they could turn up the heat on Congress. <laughs> You cannot get things through if you do not have popular support. And Obama, in ramming Obamacare through, I think doomed his administration because he so infuriated people at the very arrogance of driving it through when people didn't want it. And so I would say to you, we're going to pick our fights in a way that we maximize support. But let me give you the easiest example. The Department of Energy has actually been the Department of Anti-Energy. I mean, it's created more regulations, more bureaucracy, wasted more money. It was designed in the 70s to make us energy independent. It's a failure. And we ought to seriously look at fundamentally replacing it, getting rid of it, and going back to a market-oriented system that maximizes the development of American resources. I'll just give you that one example. The same thing I will say, though, if you apply Lean Six Sigma in modern management to a place like the Department of Labor or the Department of Housing and Urban Development, you'll be shocked how much bureaucracy you eliminate, and how much money you save. And finally, if you apply the 10th Amendment, and, and uh, uh, just one last example, there are 185 federal programs for the poor. That's 185 separate bureaucracies, 185 separate sets of paperwork, 185 separate little networks, one of our proposals is you block grant them all into one program, send the money back to the states, and let the states work on, on helping the poor at the state level. You save billions of dollars by eliminating all that federal bureaucracy in Washington, D.C. So that's the direction. I think we need really big change. With your help, I think together we can get really big change. That change starts on January 3rd here in Iowa at the caucuses. I need your help talking to your friends and neighbors to offset the negative ads. We have a, a newt.org, we have a section that answers the ads. People can go there. I want to do a series of telephone town hall meetings. The next one, I think, will be at 6.30 on Thursday. Uh, we had 14,000 people on last Saturday morning. So the people who have questions about all this negativity can ask me direct, can hear my voice, can get my explanations. Uh, and I am confident that another two weeks we'll be in 44 towns next week. Uh, and I'm confident that by the time we're done, people will choose a positive, solution-oriented candidate over politics as usual with the same old negative baloney. So thank you all very, very much.